All right, guys, Gemini, back with another video. And hey, in today's video, uh, we're going to be discussing something that, um, it, you know, anytime you discuss old wrestling on YouTube, generally you you get kind of a lukewarm response. There's not a whole lot of old wrestling fans left on here, but this one will be a video for those old wrestling fans who uh, remember WCW back in the day. Today we're going to be discussing the epic fail known as WCW World War Three. <laughs> wow. Uh, okay, so I'll take you guys to, to the origins of it. World War Three in 1995 was in Norfolk, uh, Virginia at the Scope. Very historic, historic wrestling building. WCW officials in, in uh, November of 95 get together and decide hey, you know the WWF has the Royal Rumble, the 30-man Battle Royal. So we're going we're gonna to beat that. We're going to do a 60-man Battle Royal for the WCW title. Um, now, the concept sounded awesome. As a WCW fan in 1995, the concept sounded awesome. You're thinking, 60-man Battle Royal? Oh, man, this is so epic. This is like three Royal Rumbles in one. Okay, so they get to the match in 95 in the scope in, in Virginia. Now, they have three rings uh, all, all next to each other, which is a little strange. And throughout the night, the wrestlers who were competing in the matches before, you know, uh, Benoit, you know, had a match, um, and Ric Flair and Sting had a match, where they were bouncing around rings, you know, just wrestling, uh, you know, in various rings throughout the night. So you finally get to the WCW World War III uh, match. And you have 20 wrestlers in each ring. And you're looking at the competitors actually coming to the ring in this match. And a lot of them were just preliminary wrestlers, jobbers coming to the ring, like Tim Horner and a bunch of nobodies were coming to the ring in 95. So they start the match. They have, uh, check this out on the WWE Network if you, you guys haven't seen it yet or you haven't seen it in a while. It's crazy. They have three split screens. Uh, <clears throat> On the top, or on the top left, the top right, and the bottom. And in each ring, it's just a mass of humanity. I mean, 20 wrestlers in each ring. You cannot tell what the hell is going on in any of these rings. They keep bouncing from a uh, camera angle in one ring to another camera angle in another ring. So you're missing all the action in another ring while they have the camera in another ring. And so they're trying to keep three... Uh, Three, three screens at once and you just all you see is just bodies I mean literally you cannot tell what the hell is going on in any of these matches and I remember I was sitting there and I was watching this with my dad and my dad is like he goes Vince um, this is stupid I can't tell who's winning I can't tell anything and I was like I know and it was just a big giant clusterfuck mass of humanity the World War III concept was an epic fail. You, you can't, you can't put 60 huge wrestlers on TV at once and expect to be understand um, what the hell's going on, you know. And it comes down to the end, you know. And Macho wins the WCW World Title, you know, over Hogan, and Hogan doesn't want to admit he loses, and and Hogan is is flirting with the dark colors at the time, and and Sting is involved in this. It, it was just a crazy uh, concept. So what I'm going to challenge you tonight is, if you get an opportunity, go back and watch WCW World War 395. They ran it through uh, 98. But this was definitely one of the most craziest, weirdest, strangest pay-per-views that you'll, or matches. I mean, actually, the pay-per-view in 95 was actually really good with good wrestling. But if you actually watch the World War 3 match, Man, it was like just, it was hard to watch because it was just, you couldn't tell what the fuck was going on. At least in the Royal Rumble, you have one ring, you know, maybe 10 wrestlers at once. And you could tell, like, from the, the camera that's right, you know, pointing to the ring, you could tell what the hell's going on in the ring. You could tell who's throwing out who, who's beating up who, you know, who's trying to toss out who, you know, what wrestler's going out with another wrestler. I mean, it makes sense. And when you watch the WCW World War Three match, you, you can't tell anything. Plus, it was just a, a filler. 
You know, they're just putting jabroni wrestlers in there. And then the big show would come in, and it was the giant at the time, and he would just start tossing bodies out, start tossing jobbers out left and right. You know, it just, it was a crazy concept. It was a try and definitely a fail on WCW's part, you know. And then, you know, years later, you know, the NWO, of course, started dominating this thing. And the NWO would always win, and they would always have the heels win and send the crowd home pissed off because the heels always won, won this match. It just, it didn't make a whole lot of sense. Um, WCW did not think the World War III concept out at all from a logistic standpoint. I'm curious uh, if you what you guys thought about WCW World War III. Uh, I thought it would be fun today to do a little retro stuff on here. You guys leave your comments on the World War III uh, match, 95 through what, 98? I'm curious to get your guys' thoughts if you guys thought it was a, a fail. To me, it was a it was a fail, and I'm going to challenge you tonight or within the next week to go back and watch WCW World War III match and hit me up on Facebook or Twitter, uh, Vincent Flair on Facebook, uh, Gemini888 on Twitter, and let me know what you thought about the World War III match. I I'm curious to get your guys' thoughts on this. I'm Gemini. Thank you for listening. And tomorrow I'll be back with uh, Best of Raw and SmackDown DVD. Peace out.